I'm Mark Bolton. I'm a designer. I run a small studio in Cardiff, it's seven of us. So we, we do a lot of client work, but we also run a, a publisher and uh, a little uh, application as well called Gridset. The idea of, of being inspired uh, is, is, I get inspired by all kinds of things. I get inspired by walking around and looking at buildings and trying to work out what, why, why they look the way they do. Uh, I get inspired by watching my, uh, it sounds terribly trite, but my two-year-old learn, learn new words, how to construct sentences. And uh, I don't really surf the web looking for inspirational websites. I don't do that. I don't really, uh, that's not where I find inspiration. I, what excites me is reading a book from the 1950s and, under, and, and getting a, a, an insight into how um, the design process was then and the constraints that they worked under and how that how on the web we're working under similar constraints and joining the dots. Prototyping is a funny thing because it's over the years it's become much more important. Uh, it's become much more uh, as a way of communicating the, the web in the environment that it's meant to be seen. And I think that that's, that's, that's great. Clients understand that. Um, there's this whole movement of designing in the browser, but I don't necessarily buy that. I think it depends where you are in the process. It depends on the client. Uh, we work with people who are very, very comfortable prototyping. They're very, very comfortable with the process. They know that it's not gonna look like that. We've also worked with clients, showing them in a prototype very early on freak them out. So we've had to go a bit more traditional and a bit more Photoshop image-based to get them to buy into uh, the process. So it's a, kind of tentatively little step. Some people are very comfortable with it, others aren't. So it, it depends, and I know I hate using that answer to a, to a question, but it, it really does depend. Prototypes are much more useful uh, because you can, you can it's, it's an interactive medium, you can see how people will actually use it, and you can get it in front of people who aren't your client and see how they actually use it, that's great. Uh, but sometimes it just freaks people out, especially you know if people are in a very visual organization, if they're used to seeing things. A lot of times the amount of uh, the amount of times I've been said, well, what's it going to look like? Can you show me a visual? That, that comes up, and it still comes up every, every day. Grids are, a, so grids are an interest to me and have been for a long time. They're the, they're the very foundation on which uh, you, you create order in a design. You create a, um, you, you can guide the reader one way or another. It's the, it's the very foundation upon which the design is built. So getting your foundation is really, it's like architecture, right? If you build a shoddy foundation, the building's likely to fall over. If you build a shoddy grid, you're likely not going to get the opportunities that you, uh, that you would have if you just used, say, a, a cookie cutter framework grid. So the, the, some of the things that come into designing the grid, mostly it's about content and it's about understanding what your content is, if you're lucky enough to have your content. If you don't have your content, which happens quite a lot, you need to know what your content's made from, what, what it is, how, it, how it's comprised, what are the content types, and then you can build around that. So we try never to use lorem ipsum, we try never to build a prototype, for example, uh, on a grid that has just nonsense content in. Wherever possible, we'll make it up, and that freaks a client out as well sometimes. Um, in a good way, because then they, they confront the content problem a lot sooner in the process. Uh, traditionally, content was left right till the end. And, and a lot of clients are used to that. Oh, we'll get to the content, we'll get to the content, just put something in for now. Um, working that way just brings it right up. Um, and also, prototyping has made us have to think about grids a lot sooner because we're having to get it into a browser, especially for responsive design. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that there's Grids have, have never been actually more important than they are right now, really. Responsive design has changed the way that we may think about grids because grids are traditionally static. If you think of the printed media, grids are derived from the form. So if it's a book or it's a brochure or it's a, it's a newspaper, your layout and your grid is derived from the shape of the paper and it, it works inwards. Um, a browser, of course, is fluid, so we don't have a fixed size. And especially with responsive designs, that fluidity actually goes from really, really small, potentially, to as big as a billboard or a large TV. It's, it's, it, and it's everywhere in between. 
And that's really challenged the way that we have to think about grids. So responsive design has really, certainly over the past two years, it's really changed the way that I approach making them um, and the final output of what those grids are. We may have several different types of grids for different screen resolutions or devices.